Looking for the perfect way to stump your enemies? Well, we've got what you need! At Pharisee Outfitters, we have all the tricky traps you need to take down any pesky foe who doesn't agree with you or threatens your power. Hmm, so will these traps work on Jesus? After Jesus fed the 5,000 in Capernaum, he heads into Jerusalem for the Feast of the Tabernacles, despite the threat of arrest and even execution by the authorities. There, rather than hide, he teaches at the temple, twice. And so the frustrated Pharisees spring their first trap. They burst through the crowd, dragging with them a woman they proclaim was caught in the act of adultery. Moses says she should be stoned for her actions. What do you say? But wait a minute. It's an old law that likely hasn't been regularly enforced in 700 years. And the law of Moses actually states you bring the man. So why do they bring just the woman? Hmm, something's fishy. Rather than being provoked into reacting in judgment, Jesus sidesteps their clumsy trap. He then does something surprising. He just stoops down and writes in the dust like he doesn't hear them. Now, we don't know what Jesus wrote, but he takes his time. This probably drags the attention of the crowd away from the mortified woman and takes the thunder, urgency, and drama out of the Pharisee's trap. Finally, Jesus calmly states, He that is without sin cast the first stone. The crowd gasps and looks at the Pharisees. Now the spotlight's on them. Their plan backfired, and they uncomfortably start to remember their own sins. So the foiled Pharisees slink away. Jesus looks up, sees the woman standing alone, and asks her, Where are those that condemned you? She answers that there's nobody. Then Jesus comforts her by saying, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And the woman glorified God from that hour. It's another amazing lesson from the Master on how to balance grace and justice by extending mercy while still requiring repentance. Also, Jesus suspends judgment on the woman and perhaps on the Pharisees too by pausing to allow everyone the opportunity to do the right thing. He didn't make a scene and shame her in front of all those people, but instead he diffused the drama and taught with love. Which leads us to... A chemistry lesson? Well, you see, chemicals don't have a choice in how they react, but we do. The next time we're surrounded by a bunch of drama, which might result in an explosion of anger or judgment, we can remember that, like Jesus, we can act with patience and love instead of react like a chemistry experiment. Now, after a few more run-ins with the Pharisees, where their traps are no match for his logic and pure truth, Jesus comes upon a blind man at the gate of the temple. Here, the disciples discuss if his blindness is a result of his sins or the sins of his parents. But Jesus assures them the man isn't blind because of sin, rather, to show God's power through him. Jesus then spits in dirt to make mud and applies it to the blind man's eyes, telling him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Wow, not your usual prescription for a miracle. Now the pool of Siloam was on the other side of Jerusalem. So the man has to stumble past tons of other places he could wash, navigating the crowded streets of Jerusalem blind, looking like a fool with mud smeared on his face. But he obeys. And this difficult and confusing journey leads to the miraculous restoration of his sight. But what about us? Do we ever feel like we're in the dark, even while we're striving to obey the Lord? The path of discipleship takes tons of faith. There are so many distractions and voices around us. It can be confusing, and we don't always see the reasons why we're asked to walk certain paths. But God's word is like a light, and when we follow his path, the darkness dispels, and we see things the way they really are and we see the Savior for who He 
really is. Unfortunately, the healing of the blind man causes such a stir that he gets hauled into court to explain how he must have faked it. You'd think one trap the Pharisees should have been able to make work was their court, since they were the lawyers and the judge. But sadly for them, well, facts. And facts are stubborn things. How can you see? Jesus put mud on my eyes, told me to wash, and now I see. How is this possible? He's a prophet. Objection! You have no evidence that he's a prophet, other than tons of miracles and the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Sustained! Strike it from the record! So when did this alleged miracle take place? On the Sabbath. Aha! So you admit Jesus is a sinner! How can a sinner perform miracles on the Sabbath? I just know that I was blind, and now I see. Oh yeah? How many fingers do I have behind my back? Uh... I call this man's parents as witnesses. Is this your son, allegedly born blind, who now allegedly sees? This is our son, and he was born blind. We don't know how he can see now. He is a grown-up. Ask him. But how? It's impossible. I object. You must be sinners along with Jesus. If he was not of God, he could not make the blind see. Uh... I hold you in contempt of this court. You are hereby banned from the synagogue and all polite society. Bailiff, get him out of here. And so the man's kicked out for speaking the truth and having the faith to see by those too blind to understand. Soon afterward, the Savior finds him again, and this time, far more valuable than having his sight restored, the man receives a sure knowledge of the divinity of Christ. Hopefully, we can all learn to truly see the trap set by those who refuse to see. And gratefully, with God's knowledge and wisdom, we can move from being farsighted to being faith-sighted and see the light which will lead us through any darkness. Almost 50 years ago, Living Scriptures was founded to help everyone better understand and feel the power of God's Word. Who knew that today's Line Upon Line series would touch half a million lives every week? Season 4, The Glorious New Testament is in production, and you are invited to help us in this great cause by clicking the donation link below. And as our gift to you, anyone donating $10 per month also receives a Living Scriptures streaming subscription. For a donation of $1,000 or more, our artists will give your likeness a cameo in one of our videos. Together, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can make a lasting impact on countless people around the world. From all of us, thank you. And now, go read the scriptures for yourself.